is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro on a Friday, rolling out the red carpet for our last segment. Got a three-day weekend, man, President's Day, so let's see how much money I can lose at the blackjack tables. Well, the guy we have with us in studio right now, he's done pretty well at the blackjack tables. I think he's done very well for himself. Uh, His name is Anthony Kernis, world-renowned as one of the best card counters in the history of blackjack. Also a best-selling author and owns his own publishing company, a very successful man. Far successful than myself, that's for sure. Anthony, thanks so that's much. That's an for- absolute fact. <laughs> Anthony, thanks for coming in. How are you doing? Man, if I'm that good, I don't need to be on the radio <laughs> show, do I? <laughs> thanks, th- thanks for all that. <laughs> no, nope. Well, it's true. So when was the first moment in your head, going back, how old were you, when you said, you know, I want to get into this blackjack thing. I want to learn how to count cards. When did that happen? I know exactly. I know exactly when it was. Um, I was in 10th grade in Dearborn, Michigan. And a friend of the family came over. He used to come over and we'd play Monopoly. We used to play what we call Speed Monopoly. We'd get about seven to ten games of Monopoly in in a day. Very cutthroat thing. I played a lot of short course card games, Pinochle Hearts, you know, with the family. And uh, this was a friend, and he said, you know, he goes, you're a damn good game player. He goes, why don't you read this book? And he handed me a book called How to Win at Blackjack by a guy named Charles Einstein. Not the Einstein. No relation? No, but it was (laughs) Charles Einstein. And I read that book right away, and it it clicked. I went, oh, yeah, this will work. So from the point where I was, I was in 10th grade, from that point forward, I was reading everything I'd get my hands on waiting to turn 21. So it was another, like a five-year wait while I you know, waited for that opportunity. So when did it turn into you have a team put together? Because, you know, the Kevin Spacey movie, uh, at times I thought it was a little bit unrealistic. I'm sure you would agree. Yeah. Uh, and you never have... Uh, never a guarantee you're going to win if you're card counting, but it gives you what about a two percent advantage? Is that accurate? No, uh, I would say less. I would a say I really it's, it's that's more not like a lot. A, I'd say more like a one and a quarter percent. That's not even a lot. So you're saying for every thousand dollars you bet, you know, you have what a eleven dollar mm-hmm. advantage yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you have a huge bankroll, obviously that's a big advantage. Okay, so you're in tenth grade. I would imagine. Wow, that's unbelievable. You're like sixteen. You're a teenager. Yeah. Right. So when does it turn into a business for you? We're actually making boatloads of money. Well, what happened was um, I was uh, I was a wrestler in Michigan, and I was a pretty good wrestler, and I was able to get uh, some. Wait, scholars. Jim Jordan wasn't uh, your coach, was he? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No, just, no, just making no, sure. No, no, I, just no, making I, sure. No, I, I love town before all of that, but uh, <laughs> I ended up going to Duke, and um, I wrestled for, at Duke for a year, and then I got tra- I transferred to UCLA. Mm-hmm. Notice I'm getting closer to Vegas, you know. As right, I go. right. You're getting a little closer. Yeah, and essentially, as soon as I turned 21, I, I dropped out. I didn't even finish college, wow. and I, I came straight to Vegas. And and, you know, hit the streets and started playing, uh, got my rear end handed to me, you know, right off the bat, uh, kind of regrouped, came back and started doing better. Um, this is way back, 79, 80. Mm-hmm. Um, and what happens is you meet people and, you know, you'll be playing on a game and you look around and you see, you know, you, you, you see a guy who's playing like you are or, you know, he's making the right plays. And afterwards, and he knows you're right. You're making the right plays. You know, I mean, we know better who the other guys are than the casino does. And it's sort of like a little wink and a nod, and all of a sudden you're out having a, you know, having a beer together, and then you meet another guy like that, and all of a sudden you got a team. So it, right. it, it, it worked for a while like that where we, we had some throw-together things, and uh, then I got recruited by some big names, and we, we played some big games. Okay, so explain to me this. In your heyday, when you were uh, most successful— what was your bankroll, meaning how much money did you buy into a blackjack table, and what was the minimum bet that you, know, that you would go to? Okay, well, this is going to be a little bit deceiving because, uh, you know, we said before we went on air that everybody thinks it's so sexy. It's not so sexy, man. You know, I mean, the idea is you want to stay under the radar. Mm-hmm. So we typically, we bought in for very low amounts, and we played at, you know, games where we were betting uh, maybe – Fifty dollars to five hundred, or mm-hmm. you know, maybe a hundred to a thousand, or something like that. And, in, in, in most our, places, you'll never get caught betting like right, that. In right. In our and those were our biggest plays. And right. So our idea was, you know, don't be flashy, don't get seen. Take out, you know, take out small amounts. Take out two, three thousand a night, and uh, you know, don't be too greedy. And that didn't That's, always happen. You know, right. I mean, sometimes we'd we'd lose that in the night, and, right. you know, and and some days we'd have really big nights. So it was, you know, our main thing was to longevity because it's different. It's different. It was different then than it is now. Now you sure. got blackjack all over the country. Yeah. Uh, the books that we publish now, all these young guys are coming in. They're saying, just go for it. Go for the throat. They throw you out. Doesn't matter. There's a million places to play. Well, that wasn't the case for us. You know, we were in. We had Vegas, we had Reno Tahoe, and we had Atlantic City, and, and maybe the Caribbean, and that was about it. So longevity was really important. Okay, so give me the premise of it. I have an understanding, uh, a basic understanding of if, if the deck is rich in face cards, that's when you want to go after the dealer, and you want to increase your bet.
bets, and it changes your basic strategy a little bit. So, uh, listen, it's very difficult, a, a lifetime of, of, of what you've learned in, in card accounting, and, and you were one of the best in the world at it, and I'm sure you would, still would be if we were playing right now. Can you give a ba- very basic generic uh, analysis or understanding to our listeners of how card counting works, how, a basic of how, yeah. do, how you do it? Sure. Well, first of all, the, the idea, the, the base of it is that blackjack is a game of dependent trials. Meaning what's happened before does affect, it's dependent. What will happen next is dependent on what's happened before. Okay, a roulette wheel, no. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter what's happened before. Right. It's the same you're odds You're saying with blackjack, what, what goes up must come down and, and vice versa. Exactly. Okay. So what you're looking for is a deck that is rich in the cards that you want to be in the deck. And you, you correctly stated you want high cards and aces. The reasons are kind of obvious, you know, because a blackjack with a high card and an ace, you know, a 10 card and an ace pays a bonus. If you're doubling down, you're going to get tens on 11s and tens and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So what you do is you essentially you weight the cards as they come out. You weight them and you give them a number value. And as they come out, it's like working a number line. It's that easy. It's like going back and forth on a number line: plus one, two, three, minus one, minus two, plus one, plus minus one. You just got to be able to count a number line and go into negative numbers mm-hmm. and not get fouled up. Now that's about it. I'll, and then it, it then you are able to tell when it is is ripe for you to make the bigger bets. Uh, I hate to uh, change. It's not changing the subject because a man that I was playing blackjack with a few weeks ago, uh, a month ago, month and a half ago, I was playing blackjack with Mike Lavinati. As you know, Mike Lavinati, Stormy Daniels' former attorney, he was just in town a month and a half ago. He was just on our show. He, he was sitting in, in your seat. Well, we've just received ah. we've just <laughs> received some breaking news that is not too good for Mike Lavinati. Mike Lavinati has just been convicted on all counts in the Nike extortion case. Uh, we just got this news. Uh, this is a guy that we've known, <laughs> Anthony. Sorry to change the subject, but for six months, uh, we've developed a friendship with him. Uh, he now faces up to forty four years in prison. Um, I'm kind of in shock, to be quite honest with you. I'm very surprised. I'm in shock. Myself as well. Yeah. And you're a Vegas guy. I mean, you know, you can relate a little bit to this story. I mean, the guy got involved with Nike and, uh, you know, uh, the jurors found him guilty on all charges. He is not getting out of jail anytime soon. He's going to need an attorney better than himself, probably. Um, And you guys gave me his seat? Damn. (laughs) <laughs> Squ- well, you know, Squir- squirming here, boys. Listen, we're gonna we're gonna cover this story next week. We're off Monday, so we'll be able to get into more detail. But let me just say this quickly, and then we'll get back to. Sure. Uh, I don't mean to steal your thunder here, but let me just say this. Um, I've been saying for months now he hasn't been convicted. He hasn't been convicted, and I'm not gonna sit here and call him a criminal unless he's convicted. Well, gonna have to change my tune now and be honest. Uh, Mike Lavinati is a convicted felon. Mike Lavinati is a criminal. My, I'm very disappointed in Michael. It, it, you know, uh, he's convicted, so he can say he's innocent all he wants to. A jury found him guilty, and uh, I did consider him a friend. Uh, I feel horrible for him. He's not a violent criminal, but right now he's sitting in the former jail cell of El Chapo, and right now he's probably thinking in his mind, "Wow, I made a lot of mistakes. I broke the law." And my life is, I'm not going to say his life is over, but let's keep in mind, he still has the Stormy Daniels case, and he still has the case in California with the paraplegic. I think it's fair to say, and then we'll move on, I think it's fair to say, Michael Avenatti is, might not get out of jail until he's a very old man. Is that a fair statement to make? I don't think that that's an unfair statement to make at this point. Right. And it's true, by the way, you know, uh, Anthony. I was playing blackjack with Michael Avenatti. J.D., you were there. This was like six or seven weeks ago. He, he wasn't exactly a, a great... Blackjack player. Oh, great blackjack no, he player. didn't have great money management. Well, you know, no. here's, here's an interesting associated thing. You know, when you're playing blackjack, there's a lot of ways to win. You know, what I do or what I did and, sure. and when, we, when I played, it's called advantage play these days. And that's being able to get an edge over the casino. And mm-hmm. advantage play also includes cheating. There are many ways to cheat. And I was offered many times to be on groups that Can were Can you give me an example? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's some, things, some of these things are extremely sophisticated. You know, guys actually use cameras will come in and use cameras and set them on and to, to try to get a, a look at the dealer's whole car. Cameras, car. really? Uh, no, you know, what, that sort of thing. What, what about the movie Casino where they're, they're touching their, their thigh? The group, the two guys are touching their thigh. Uh, a mechanical device. The yeah. The mechanical was, device. He gets pulled out and obviously he gets his, you know, his finger you know, smashed by a hammer. Yeah, that was a, that similar thing. That was a, a hole carding, if I, if I recall that right, that was a hole carding situation where they were seeing the dealer's hole card and they were signaling to him what that hole card was through the buzzer that he had. Right. So I had many opportunities to do that. Our group always, and this is the truth, uh, we drew the line at illegality. We would not go into illegal places. None of us wanted to go to jail. And we did every single thing if it had, for instance, seeing the whole card without a device, 
if you just see it and take advantage of it, if a dealer's going to show it to you, it's going through the courts that you are allowed to use that information. So we would play hold card. We'd find dealers who were flashing right. their cards and were sloppy. We would do that because it had already I've gone. I've seen that before. Yeah, of yeah. course. What are you going to do when the dealer's showing you I think it's a little more card? rare now than it was back then, right? And they're tighter. Well, it's, it's dealer error at that point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they're tighter. But, I mean, that had gone through the courts, and that had been deemed legal. If they're not going to protect their game and they're going to show it to you, you can use that. So we would do it, but we would not use the devices or anything that would put us on the other side of the law. Because that's, that's deemed illegal, of course. Correct. Okay, yeah. so um, – you're you're making two three thousand dollars on a on a good night. You lose a couple grand on a bad night. Split up right. among guys. So how girls, long did this know. last in your career where you're doing this? Uh, it's about a decade and a half. Okay. Are yeah. you, uh, can you tell us like what was what was your yearly salary? I mean, what were you making back then? Uh, back then we were we were absolutely you know we were making high five figures a person. But high we, five figures per person. Yeah, but I mean you know like sixty seventy thousand that type of thing fifty sixty. Now we had we how had many hours years. a week. It varied, sometimes zero. <laughs> That's what was nice about it. But remember, we're all in our 20s and 30s, right? right. So, I mean, yeah, we had six-figure years. You guys made that. millions of dollars throughout the course of your career. That's fair sure. to say, right? Absolutely. Oh, that's incredible. How long did you get one deck blackjack? Um, you know, all right, so everybody's like, okay, one deck's what you want. Actually, there was a lot of single deck around back then. Um, you know, again, in the 80s and, and early 90s, there was plenty of single deck but we didn't necessarily want that because uh, you didn't get as many as many hands, and it was more suspect. So you know, you one of the the misconceptions about counting cards is that you need to, a small number of decks. You could count twenty decks. You could count a hundred decks. It doesn't matter. It's because it's it's just cumulative, and it's like I said, it's a number line. It's what's important is how far into that pack of how many decks they deal. So if they're dealing 20, 20 decks and they're dealing down to nineteen and a half, you got a bonanza. And if they're dealing a single deck and they're shuffling at a half a deck, you ain't got nothing. You don't have much. So I so. heard, I heard Anthony. You know, if you're a casual gambler, and because that's who really we're talking to here, we're not talking to the professional sharks out there. But if you're a casual better, you have five hundred dollars in your wallet. Isn't there something called casual counting, uh, where a casual better can sit at a table and count maybe a two deck shoe and maybe minor adjust your bets based on the count? Is is it possible for the casual better to do something like that? Uh, that's scary. You know, yeah. when you talk about casual, because there's really nothing casual about it. You've got to be, you really got to be on the game if mm-hmm. you're gonna if you're gonna get the money. Mm-hmm. Um, you could, yeah, you could take a, a kind of a, a halfway approach to it. And probably do a little better. There you do something like you count aces against fives. All right, that's something easy to do. And you look for situations where there's an abundance of aces versus fives remaining in the deck. So you can improve your game in little dribs and drabs that way. But to say that, all right, I'm going to kind of count cards, it, it doesn't really work that so way. So neutral, neutral deck, uh, I see some people, uh, I know mathematically you're supposed to double on 11 versus a face card, but some people don't do it. What are your thoughts on that? And what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, 12 versus two, those types of situations? Okay. Well, those are, we're talking basic strategy plays now. Right. So, basic you know, strategy, neutral deck. Yep. Yeah. You should always, you should, you should be hitting the 12s against twos and threes, and you should be doubling the, the, uh, the 11s against all cards except aces. I mean, and, that's and splitting, and splitting eights versus face card, uh, mathematically speaking, it's the right thing to do, right? Not only is it the right thing, but it's the right thing by quite a ways. It's a, a very, it's much stronger to split the eights than to do anything else, regardless of so what, what the dealer is showing. So what do you make of these casinos that aren't even paying three to two on blackjack now? Does, isn't that to offend you? It offends me. That's crap. You know, I mean, it's just it's just absolute crap. And it's just, you know, it's 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 something akin to paying for parking, uh, resort fees. That's a joke, uh, yeah. You know, pitch counts on, right. uh, on on video poker for getting drinks. It's just a nickel and diming play that just yeah. doesn't doesn't make any so sense. So speaking of nickel and diming, uh, uh, you know, there's by some... By the way, the... the the father of the resort fees, Jim Mern, is now resigned from MGM. Oh, man. Ooh. I, 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 Ooh. Hey, look, I, I, <laughs> I'm going to offend somebody here. I always said the G in MGM stands for gouge. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're just speaking with, if you're just joining us, we're speaking with Anthony Curtis, uh, uh, been a professional gambler for most of his life, done very qual- quite well as a uh, card counter in blackjack. He now owns his own publishing company. He's also uh, sold some great books that he's written himself. We'll get to that here in just a few minutes, and also we're covering the breaking news. Michael Avenatti has just been convicted uh, on all counts in his Nike 
Kentucky extortion trial. So we will certainly cover the story more as we learn more information next week on that. But, uh, okay, so Anthony, you make uh, an enormous amount of money. You earned it, by the way, and make no mistake about it, card counting is not illegal. The casino has the right to kick you out for any reason. They could not like your shirt. They could not like the fact that I'm bald and I look deathly ill. Uh, that, you know, there's many reasons people can kick you out. Uh, I've actually seen you kicked out for that three times. Uh, yeah, yeah for, for, for my looks. But so, so, okay, so you make an enormous amount of money. Uh, or enough money where you can live comfortably. Right. Uh, what stopped you from continuing that? Was it the casinos that just kicked you guys out? What At what age did they say that's it, or are you retired? Well, what, ha- what, what happened to me um, was I got too well-known, and uh, that happened because one of the things we decided to do early on was to play casino tournaments. All right, so when you're talking about enormous amounts of money, that's where we won enormous amounts of money because we were winning tournaments with – with uh, prizes of 50,000, 70,000, 125,000. Wow. You know, we were winning more than that even. You know, I mean, we were winning some big tournaments. We knew we had great opportunity there because we analyzed those tournaments in a better way. Mm-hmm. And and I happened to win more than my share. So I got really well known really mm. fast. And I had to make a decision, keep playing or do something else. And I started the publishing company and I started doing things like this. Right, right. <laughs> Going on and showing my face <laughs> and telling, telling people what I know and, you know, blah, sure, blah, blah. Sure, sure. You became and, public. Yeah, I became public. I had a choice. I go this way or that way and I went that way. So and, so a lot, a lot of very successful poker players, they, they do well, at, like for example, a Phil Ivey, um, Tom DeWan, they do well at cards and then they try to diversify into sports betting, into roulette, into blackjack. Did you ever do that or did you stick with blackjack? Well, we stuck with all games that we could get an advantage at. I mean, you know, the audience for for your, you know, for your knowledge here, there are really basically only without every game you can get an edge on one way or another. But there are five games that you can play just according to the proper strategies and be a winner. Those are blackjack, poker, video poker, sports betting, and race betting. Yeah. And those are the five things we did. Did you ever drink alcohol at the table? All the time. <laughs> All <laughs> the really? time. I, I rarely played without drinking. And it didn't affect your performance at all? Well, that's it, uh, it's one way to stay under the radar. Okay. It's, it's one way to, to throw them off the track. But what, what I did, we did a lot of what's called a big player m- a method, where you have a bunch of guys at like four or five different tables, and they're counting the decks down. We're playing shoes now. We're not playing single Which decks. Which is in 21. Yes, yeah. exactly. That style. And then they give you a sign, and you come in, and a big player comes in. And I was usually the big player because I could drink the most and keep my wits. So, so I was always drinking at the table. Now, obviously, your, your expertise, obviously, your world-renowned uh, card counter and blackjack. But let's talk about a few other games, as J.D. alluded to. So in craps, I hear some people say that you can set the dice, that there are certain ways where you could set the dice if you're, if you're, if you're not that – if it's not too big of a table, that if you have the ability and the eye-hand coordination and the talent – you can beat the game by setting dice. Is there any truth to that? A little bit. Um, I know some very talented players who gave that a real go. And they spent uh, months and years practicing and checking it out. And everyone pretty much came to the conclusion that, yes, you can have an effect. You can get good enough that you have an effect in throwing it. But the effect is very, very small, and it is very transparent. They, everyone can see what you're doing. So that one's everyone kind of tried <laughs> right. it and ticked it off. So I heard you like you set the dice on like 33 or 44, and Stay and then you in there and look like a you know look like you're getting ready <laughs> yeah. at a shooting range, and you know <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> all this kind of business. And it's like, come so on, they, man. they give you a two and a half minute clock and you pass through it. <laughs> yeah, the boss is after a minute. They're like, get out of here, man. <laughs> 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 That's true. So when when people at the blackjack table are not counting, okay. I'm one of these people, I go nuts when people are like hitting 15 versus 6, when people are not playing basic strategy. But then when you take a couple steps back, you realize it could either help you or hurt you because yeah. it's so random, right? So why is it these gamblers want to blame somebody for playing bad basic strategy or taking their cards away from them? But in reality, it could hurt or help you, right? It, it, it could go either way. Yeah, there's been scientific studies done on this that show that it makes absolutely no difference the skill of other players at the table or what they do. Mm-hmm. It makes no difference. Because but you want to blame somebody. <laughs> well, they, they want to blame somebody and they're not they're not educated and right. they think they know. I'll tell you this was one of the toughest things about playing when I played is that it's a very solitary thing. Look, if you're a great performer, if you're a great athlete, you know, you want to perform in front of people, right? If you're you have an audience. If yeah, if you're a great blackjack player, it's the opposite. You don't want anybody to know. And I can't tell you how many times I've been screamed at at a table for making a play and told what a what a dolt I was when really I'd really made a very high level play and you know, you can't go, "Listen, moron." You don't know what you're talking about. You go, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. And right. that's what you got to do, and right. it, it begins to wear on you after right. a while. You know? So so let's talk a little bit about life now. 
uh, after uh, you know professional gambling. And I, I would you're a smart guy, so I would imagine you invested your money and you've saved some of that money, and you're living you're living great right now, and and you're living in the town that I love to live in, which is Las Vegas. We both love it here. So you decide uh, after this to help others, to mentor others. You've written books. You own your own publishing company. Talk a little bit about life after uh, being one of the world's best blackjack card counters. Well, it, 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 for the sake of honesty, let's let's get this straight. I wouldn't be mentoring anybody if there was no money in it. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's fair. So I yeah. mean, you know, I mean, I publish books, uh, right. books for profit. Um, we happen to publish what I think most people in the know would say are the best gambling books in the world because we're very uh, fastidious about the math. We're very careful about about the presentation and that we're we're not giving bad information away. So we are doing a service to people who want to make their games better. I'm not saying we're going to turn people into pros, but we're going to make them play better than they do if they heed what we what we do. Now, now so, I, 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 I going back to the gambling part and you helping people. Um, I think poker is the if you're a skilled gambler, poker is probably the best way to go along with sports betting. Sports betting right is very difficult. You have to be at least 53, 54%, which is very difficult. Yeah. Poker you're playing against other players at the table and and I think I think uh, it, it, I can only speak from my personal experience. That's the only game where I can 100% tell you I'm 100% uh, you know, doing doing well or winning mm-hmm. in the positive. So a casual better who moves to Vegas who wants to gamble a couple times a week what game would you recommend they learn and play and, and contact you on? Um, I, honestly, I think video poker. Really? Yeah, I think video poker because video poker, especially at lower levels, most people when they start, they're going to play at lower levels. Um, now, you can take that as far as you want. There's a guy named Bob Dancer. I don't know if you know the name, but he's considered the number one video poker expert in the world. He wrote a book for us called Million Dollar Video Poker. But in the long run, aren't they, t- you know, what payback is like 98%, right? No, there's, there are many opportunities where the payback is right up in, in the high 99s or above, but it's all really? the other things that come with it. It's the player's card, it's the bonuses, it's the cash back they send to you, it's all these different things. This guy came to town with something like seven grand and turned it into a million in two years. How? By by being read the book, <laughs> but I mean it's all in the book how he did so it. So what type of video? Po- I, I like he's, bonus poker because two pair pays. What what what, well, what 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 would you recommend if you're a video poker player? Well, good for you. You just you just nailed it. In most places that you're going to go, in most bars. See, I know what I'm talking about, JD. Well, yeah, it has to be bonus poker. What game did I tell you to play? Bonus, bonus poker <laughs> always. <laughs> almost almost always, in, especially in bars, the best game in the in the box that you can pick is bonus poker. One of the worst games is the one that everybody wants to play, which is double double. You know, everybody wants to play double double. Chris Wynn. That's why he's a losing gambler. Or Keno. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. Keno. Now, how right. about how about Caveman Keno? <laughs> that's yeah. what our friend plays. Yeah. Oh, much better. All right. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this: You walk into a bar, you're a casual better, you want to play bonus poker. Now, some bonus poker machines are better than others, as you know. Some full houses pay up to forty credits; others only pay thirty. That makes a big difference. But give me. Uh, we only got a couple more minutes here, but give me uh, uh, some bankroll management. If you if you only want to lose a hundred dollars. Should you be playing 25 cents, 50 cents, and when do you cash out? Oh, without question, you should be playing 25 cents. I mean, if you. On a $100 bankroll? Yeah. What about if you have a $500 bankroll? Well, then you, could, then you can take it up a little bit a notch, maybe to 50 cents or something. Really? You've okay. got to be very. Look, the money can go very quickly in this very fast game. Right. But, you know, when do you, when do you stop? You stop, if you know what you're doing, you stop when you no longer have an edge or you're no longer playing well because you're too tired. So I like to watch, tell me if I'm wrong on that. I like to watch other players, and when they dump a lot of money in a machine, I usually like to take over that machine. For my reason being, eventually, percentage says, eventually some of these machines have to and, pay and back. I, Is that a wrong way of going I, about I, it? I can verify this, Anthony. We were at Charlie's Lakeside, and I had lost about $750 in a machine. Brian watched me lose it and, like a parasite, went over to my machine. And I within, hit for eight and, grand. And within 10 hands, <laughs> hit an $8,000 And then he wanted 4000 of it, by That's the way. fact. Well, yeah. That was unfortunate. And that's, and that's, the way, that's the way you guys are going to remember this forever. But the truth is it has no bearing. It's random. Uh, yeah, the machine yeah. doesn't get packed. It doesn't yeah. get full. doesn't have to belch it out. doesn't have to do anything. It's all every, every play there is is independent, and it doesn't matter what's so, happened before. So, I, I come with a five hundred dollar bankroll. Uh, how much money do I have to dump in a machine before I should switch to another one, or should I just stick on that same machine? That too doesn't matter. You know, as long as the pay schedules are the same, those okay. machines are going to okay. pay back basically the same. Over, you know, if you go to infinity, they're so going to pay. If, pay I, if I look at a video poker machine, it's it's at two dollars. It says paid two thousand five hundred dollars because someone just hit you know, quad aces along with something else. Should I play that machine, or should I play a machine that says paid out five cents because they just lost everything? Absolutely, doesn't matter. 
It's it, and that's the truth. And, and, it absolutely does not matter. The, the okay. chance of a of a royal coming on either machine are exactly the same. You know, approximately one in forty thousand. So if you if you if I go into a, a bar with five hundred dollars, uh, should I be happy winning a hundred dollars? We only got like thirty seconds. I left would here. be. I, I'd be yeah. happy winning anything in a bar. You Fair know, I, I play video poke in a bar to get free drinks. You yeah, know, there you go. I mean, right. that's, that's where the edge is. There, boys. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> well, Anthony, I, I'd love to have you in again where we could talk a little bit more in depth about gambling because your your knowledge is unprecedented. It's unbelievable. And yeah. And you're really good on it. Yeah, and, you, and 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 everybody knows who you are in this town too. You're you're like a casino mogul, so to speak. And everybody, uh-huh. so I I appreciate the book you gave me. And uh, quickly before we go, give out the information, website, how do people reach you? Uh, just LasVegasAdvisor.com. I mean, if you like the things we're we're talking about here, you're going to get a lot of that at LasVegasAdvisor.com. Awesome, Anthony. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for coming in. Love to have you in again. No, thanks a lot, Anthony. All right, Pleasure. appreciate it. He is Anthony Curtis. We're going to take a long weekend break. We'll see you on Tuesday, folks. Have a great day.